Listen, there are some fantastic tech jobs in the market right now. And if you could just land one, just one of them, you don't need to do any of that overwork business. Your life could very well transform for the better. I say this because the majority of these roles are high paying positions that can propel you into financial independence quicker than the average profession. However, they can also give you the skills of the future so that you are in high demand for the rest of your professional life. I'm not gonna pretend that any of the jobs I'm going to talk about shortly are easy, but they are definitely well paid. So if you're willing to do the work, leverage the skills and expertise that you already have, you can trust that you'll be compensated very, very well. I'm gonna talk about these jobs shortly, including the one that people say is the sexiest job of the century. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to find out what that is. In the meantime, please do subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell because the point of this channel is to help you take control of your career and make a successful shift into an exciting career that you love so that you can live your best life. So if you're all about that, please do hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell comment and engage with this video. If you're already subscribed, thank you for sticking around. It's really good to see you. Forgive my break due to clear medical reasons. I had surgery, took some time out. I also had the uh, panorama effect. I've recovered from all of that and I'm doing well now. So thank you and it's good to see you guys again. Now that we've gotten all of the introductions out of the way, the first role that I'm gonna talk about is artificial intelligence engineering, the big boy role. And as you've probably heard, AI has made incredible strides over the past few years, including driverless cars, forex trading with robo-advisors, but what really do engineers in artificial intelligence actually do? AI engineers give machines the ability to think and reason on their own. And I know that that sounds a bit creepy and I mean, it gives me some like cause for pause as well, but don't get me wrong, just because intelligent machines exist doesn't necessarily mean that one day they are going to decide that humans are no longer needed. This is not iRobot, so let's just all chill on that, right? Take a break. However, I'm not gonna completely pretend these thoughts are not valid because it's definitely logical to think about the implications of having machines running things without human intervention, but that's not it. It's not about humans being phased out. Humans will still be relevant, but I don't wanna digress. Some of the brightest minds in our planet, including people like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and the late Stephen Hawkins have all shown fascination and fear in equal measure for this exciting technology. So if you're concerned, it's pretty normal. All of the jokes aside, it is one of the jobs that has the most potential to improve the welfare of our society and also change the way a lot of people work. I talk about this all of the time. AI has so many practical utilities in different areas. I mean, in law, which is my background, like by the time I shifted from finance, a lot of the contracts were already drafted in the first stage by AI. And Lord knows how much better they're going to get. Of course, we need humans to teach them and program them, but they're getting to a point where they can learn things on their own. And you have to be on top of these trends and think if you are not going to be part of the AI game, how can you make sure that your job is secure and what opportunities to upskill can you leverage to make yourself the programmer instead of the one who's phased out by the machines. That's a whole different topic. If you guys are interested, comment below and I'm gonna share my thoughts and we can have a back and forth about the implications of AI for our professional futures. The next role I'm gonna talk about is a full stack developer. And you might be familiar with this already because engineers get all of the hype on YouTube and a lot of people don't actually know that, you know, there's lots of different types of engineers. In this case, we're talking about full stack ones and they are some of the most in-demand, highest paid and most valuable tech jobs in our society today. If you don't believe me, pick up your phone right now and let's look at how many apps you have installed. Now repeat the same exercise with the programs on your computer. All of the stuff that you have there was created by a group of programmers and full stack developers are always part of them. For those who are not familiar with the technology, I mean, I really was when I first made my career pivot, full stack developers are the most specialized programmers you might encounter. And I'll just explain that. When you find yourself designing software, a website, an app, there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. In fact, there's just two main ones, like the front end design, which is the visual part, the part that interacts with the users, and that's the interface and the part that they see. And then there's the back end, which comprises of everything that the user is not able to see. In other words, it's 
basically the thousands of lines of code that allow the programs to work and that's the definition in a very simplistic way let's not talk about databases and all of the relations between them complex right so what do full stack developers specialize in and if you can imagine they combine these two disciplines front end and back end and they master skills in both areas it's impossible for you to know all of the languages but it is definitely possible for you to be aware of the core ones that are relevant for the type of engineering that you're doing or the type of programs that you are designing as you can imagine having those dual skills can really boost your career and earn you like big money programmers are already in high demand it is very very competitive but it's very possible for you to slide right in and once you have those skills i feel like it's impossible for you not to enjoy professional success whether you are working with fang or you create your own thing as a consultant or you even build your own product naturally though the amount of money you can earn depends entirely on a number of factors including the country that you live in the types of languages that you program it's not unusual to hear of developers who are earning millions but there's a number of things behind that as well I'll talk about that in a different video usually that's total compensation in the UK engineers get paid well but it's nowhere near what engineers in the US can get unless they have equity as well that's also one of those conversations that I always digress into but I feel like it's important to flag this now we're coming on to another very well-paid tech role and this is cloud engineering cloud engineers are IT professionals who deal with all of the work related to the cloud this term basically refers to all of the databases and servers that allow us to manage information and run software without the need to have it physically on our computers if things are uploaded to the cloud, all of those files and all of those applications are on someone else's computer. And that's a very simplistic way to define it. A large computer that stores millions of data and none of that could be up and running without the help of a cloud engineer or many of them. The three main cloud providers that we have right now are Google, Microsoft Azure, which is the one we're using on one of the tech projects I'm working on right now. And then what's the other one? Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Cloud engineers not only monitor and manage these systems but they plan them and they design their architecture so that they can run efficiently it's such a crucial job because you can imagine that it affects millions of companies that benefit from the technology including people like me and you who are watching this video right now if you were to become a cloud engineer not only would you be able to enjoy an average salary of around a hundred thousand dollars more <laughs> but another great thing about this field is the diversity of roles such as ops security engineering and some of these roles don't necessarily require a computer science degree and you can upskill with certifications at this point let me just say a lot of people are really intrigued by what I say about leveraging your experience and shifting into industries and making that 100k but I'm just gonna tell you now if you're not willing to consistently upskill if you are not willing to repackage your experience and combine those things and actively work on what you're bringing to the table no one is going to give you 100k plus roles like it's impossible I just want to flag or highlight this point because I have those questions raised to me all the time and I'm like am I miscommunicating something here is that look I help people to shift into new industries shift into tech and leverage the experience that they already have and repurpose that to get the roles that they want that pay well and give them the status and the titles that they want however you have to do the certifications outside of those structured classes that you have you also need to do the work it's so so important you need to make time to do it you don't need to get a computer science degree to become a cloud engineer because there are roles that you can do that don't require that but you need to be willing to do the work okay okay the next role I'm gonna talk about is the one that everyone says is the sexiest one and it's one of my personal favorites because I actually didn't realize how much this role is so relevant across industries data science is what I'm talking about data scientists are usually very very well paid and in demand because they combine two disciplines that are increasingly needed in this world that we're in so the first is programming I've talked about that already it's a profession that is constantly growing and then we also have statistics a branch of mathematics that is very very important they use these two things to provide data insights that guide business and government strategy across the board you may not even realize it but you are using data as well to make some of your own personal decisions as well so let's say you have a travel company if you know what tourist spots most internet users are actively searching for then you can use that information to include that in your ads and your promotions and you double your profits because you are providing people with the information that they want and you could only 
only know that through analyzing huge sets of data. This is a very simple example of the millions of things that you can do if you are a data scientist. If you want to share that huge 150k plus salary with me, then yeah, feel free to do so. So technology jobs are increasingly in demand by millions of companies around the world. We talk about the future of work all the time, but the future is here. And it's just, I feel like it's impossible not to feel excited by the opportunities in tech and the diversity of the roles. I bang on about this a lot. Don't let the technicalities or the titles and the jobs get to you. As I talked about before, some of these roles don't actually require a computer science degree. Some of them do, of course, like AI, some of them do not. What you do need to know is the reality that many companies face on a daily basis. And few people talk about it. They talk about the great resignation and stuff, but there is actually a shortage of skilled professionals across tech. And I'm not saying specialist professionals, skilled professionals. And it's becoming more and more noticeable every day because people are drawn to the sex appeal of like, tech is sexy, tech pays well. And some of them are not qualified, nor are they trying to invest in upskilling. So if you are a mid to senior professional, you are already bringing something to the table. You just need to amplify that. And as the world of technology evolves, so is the demand for people like you. That's constantly growing. And this is also causing new jobs to emerge and existing jobs in the field to need more employees. So I've just found like the number of existing professionals in some of these like tech roles cannot keep up with the demand. And that's why companies are willing to pay mad sums of money in order to attract these professionals and keep them before their competitors, right? So you hear about Meta just throwing money at people so that they don't go to like Twitter or something. And I feel like that's an opportunity that you could seize if people are giving money away, get your bag and get the money. If you are a mid to senior professional with some experience under your belt and you're interested in tech, your existing domain expertise could be your USP, your unique distinguishing factor. And you can combine that with certifications and upskilling so that you can land a high paying role without starting from the bottom of the ladder. And that's something I can help you with. So if you'd like to work with me to make your transition happen, then make sure you click the link below this video to apply, to work with me on the Career Game Changer program. It takes just two minutes and it could change your life. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. Click here to watch some of my other videos on tech and I will see you in the next one. Bye.